Welcome back. Our next guest burst into the country's public consciousness in the 2018 Six Nations, scoring just the seven tries and winning the player of the tournament as Ireland became Grand Slam champions. And like most elite athletes, he may be currently kicking at his heels, but he's still getting behind a great cause. Ireland and Ulster winger Jacob Stockdale is joining us this morning from home. Good morning, Jacob. Morning, How Jacob. are you? Hey, guys. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you. The hair is gone. Will we see it return <laughs> when rugby returns? Uh, I'm not too sure at the moment. Uh, I'm kind of enjoying the, the shorter look at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I suppose I'll have to make a decision on that later on. We've been talking, Jacob, to various people over the last couple of months about what life is like in lockdown. But for guys like yourself, elite athletes, what can you describe what your daily routine is now? Are the clubs farming out training regimes for you? Uh, you know, you have to watch what you're eating, etc. What's your daily routine like now? Yeah, uh, Ulster kind of gave us the opportunity uh, to just be able to do your own thing to a certain extent. Um, they gave us guidelines for, for gym sessions and running sessions, and if we wanted to do them, then you know they, they encouraged that, but um, they kind of gave us the freedom to be able to do really whatever we wanted. Um, so, yeah, I kind of took the decision that it was a perfect opportunity to get into decent shape uh, for, what, for, for the first time in a while. So, uh, yeah, I've been taking advantage of that and doing, doing a lot of work. OK, well, that will please your coaches and trainers, both with Ulster and Ireland, that you are <laughs> keeping fit because we have a potential return of rugby, not till August, but we have dates, 22nd, 23rd of, of August, for the Inter-Pros. Um, so how is your plan to return to rugby going? Uh, are you in much communication with your club and, indeed, with the uh, Ireland squad? Yeah, the communication from, from both Ulster and Ireland has, has been brilliant the whole way through this. Um, you know, they've been calling us or texting us, uh, you know, putting in, us into WhatsApp groups just to talk to each other, which has been obviously great for us. Um, and, yeah, in terms of the return to rugby, hopefully it's sooner rather than later. But, um, you know, whenever we do come back, I'm sure there'll be a few, uh, a few um, like, uh, measurements put in place to make sure that, that we're kept as safe as possible. And you, like the rest of us, Jacob, I'm sure, being involved in sports, you know, you're watching other sports as well keenly to see how they're reintroducing things. So, like the rest, like myself and Aidan, you're probably watching a bit of Bundesliga and you're keeping an eye now on the Premier League, which will be back. But the idea of playing behind closed doors, to a sportsman, what do you think, what, what does that sound like to you? Do you think it, it just changes everything completely? Yeah, I think it's, it's probably just a different challenge uh, to a certain extent. Um, for me, you know, I'm just excited to get back on the pitch, uh, whatever you know, whatever shape or form that may take, and um, you know if that means playing behind closed doors, then, then so be it. But yeah, I think I think it'll bring definitely bring a different challenge in the sense that you don't have um, you know the crowd and, and the fans to kind of give you that motivation. Um, you know, it has to come from from within yourself yeah, um, a bit I more. I imagine suppose. that would make it harder for you because we always hear you guys talk about. And particularly I find with rugby players, you talk about feeding off the momentum of the crowd. You know, you hear the Munster and the Ulster guys, even the Leinster guys, when the crowd get behind you and when, then when you're playing for Ireland, it motivates you, it pushes you on. And to do that without the crowd, having to do that yourself, that'll make it tougher, won't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think the crowd does make a massive difference uh, in, in, in a rugby match. Um, and it can, you know, encourage you to kind of push on uh, and chase a, chase a box kick when you really don't want to. Um, but yeah, so so I suppose uh, you know going into a game where there's not going to be anybody in the stands uh, cheering you on, I think I think it's just a different challenge. Um, it's it's just something that I'm sure as players we'll get used to pretty quick. But uh, but something that I'm looking forward to and just kind of just to, to, to try something new, I suppose, more than anything else. Mm. And as you look back, Jacob, over the past few years, I mean, we mentioned in the introduction about 2018, uh, a scintillating year. Have you found yourself looking back over tapes of the matches, thinking about those games and those glory days? Um, yeah, I'd say I've watched pretty much every rugby match I've played in about the last four years <laughs> uh, during, during lockdown. Um, Nearly out of boredom more than anything else, um, but um, but yeah, it's it's something I enjoy doing, more, you know, and um, and I find it helpful to be able to kind of to look back over over the, the the last couple of years and and figure out what has gone well, what hasn't gone well for me, um, and and being, having this time off 
for the last couple, couple of months has been brilliant to be able to reflect in that sense. Do you feel that it's changed for you even in those, it's, it's barely been two years or so, you know, but do you feel now that there's a little bit of expectation around you, Jacob, because you burst onto the scene with that unbelievable season. Do you think now that people are now looking at you, they're looking to you as not just the future of, of, of Irish rugby, but they're expectant, they want to see you do your stuff week in, week out? Yeah, I think there's, there's definitely more of an expectation uh, on me, um, which is, you know, perfectly natural. Um, you know, whenever I came into that first Six Nations, um, nobody really expected anything from me. So so anything I did, <laughs> anything good I did was a yeah. bonus. Um, yeah. Whereas I suppose now people are probably expecting, um, you know, uh, expecting me to, to play well um, or, or to, to, to do something to score a try. And, and then whenever I don't do that, it, it's a massive <laughs> disappointment. <laughs> and... and and people tell me I don't play well. So, yeah, I think there is, there's more of an expectation um, on me, but uh, like I, I enjoy playing underneath that pressure. Jacob, let's talk about the campaign you're involved in with AWARE, a very important campaign uh, at any time, but particularly now as people uh, might be feeling down and lonely. Yeah, so, so AWARE, um, they're a, a charity partner of Maxwell, um, and, and they asked me to, to get involved and... Um, as soon as you know, I heard the, heard what the campaign was about. I thought it was a, a fantastic idea. Um, you know, obviously during lockdown, it's an incredibly tough time for a lot of people. Um, and and I've been fortunate enough to be able to to be in isolation with my girlfriend and my, and my housemate. So you know, I haven't been by myself. Um, but you know, there are people, um, friends of mine who are who are isolating by themselves. Um, and it is incredibly tough. Um, you know, it's it, it can be a lonely time for a lot of people. So. So where I had this idea that, you know, um, <clears throat> to, to get encourage people to just phone a friend and have a conversation with them, a bit of a chat. Mm. Um, it's amazing what, you know, a phone call can do to, to brighten up a person's day. And, as you say, um, Jacob, yeah, as, so, you say Jacob, as you say, a lot of people, particularly guys in your position, <clears throat> you know, you're being sent maybe training and fitness regimes, but it's your mental health that need, we need to look at that and concentrate on that and, and, you know, reach out and help each other. And this idea of just picking up the phone and texting somebody who might be on their own, who you think might need a simple conversation, it's crucial during these times, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly it. <clears throat> you know, I think, to be honest, something that I've learned and I think a lot of people have learned is how important it is to, to look after each other, you know, not just in these times, but in life in general. Um, you know, I think you're seeing more and more, uh, you know, people reaching out to neighbours and, and elderly folk in their community to make sure that, that they're being looked after um, and it's exactly the same when it comes to mental health and mm -hmm. um, you know we need to make sure that we look after each other in, in terms of mental health and, and and helping each other out yeah and and to keep it going as well before we finish jacob we've had the uh, donate details on the screen but we want to put up a picture of something else now this is you at home working on your new baby look at that a ford oh, mustang God. holy moly. are you a, are you a petrol head uh <laughs> Yes, I, I am. Um, I'm a massive petrol head and always have been. That's a beauty. Um, so are you thinking Steve McQueen and Bullet or is it more <laughs> Fast and Furious? Jeez, uh, well, it's not fast, so <laughs> it probably have to be Bullet. Like, but, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's, uh, it's a 1966 Mustang. Um, Go on, give us yeah, the petrol head details, Jacob. It's a 4.8 litre with a 2 litre Hoogee Watson and a thingy <laughs> on it. What is it. What do you call it? What would your petrol heads describe it as? Uh, it's 4.3 liter V8. Um, it's the classic 289 um, engine setup. Like <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he knows his stuff. Cool. Well, cool. Jacob. In the meantime, enjoy tinkering with that, and uh, we look forward to re the return to rugby and seeing you back scoring tries for Ulster and Ireland. Good to see you, pal. Take care. Thanks, Jacob. Stay safe. Right, after the break, we'll catch up on some of the other things doing the rounds online, including what happens when teddy bears take over a theme park. See you in a minute.